it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and today I'm going to show you how I made my dog Lucy this modern slatted sliding door dog crate. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. Living in a studio style home, sometimes Lou likes to escape the annoyances of her humans, that's us, and get some peaceful alone time. She spent a lot of time in her old black metal crate with the door open, but it was an eyesore in the middle of our living room. So I thought we might both appreciate something a little more stylish and she might like something a little cozier to chill in. Since I started working from home, Lucy rarely is ever left home alone, but for those occasional times that she is, I needed a way to close the crate. But I really didn't want to use the typical hinged or sliding doors that you're used to seeing on dog crates. So I used a pair of drawer slides to be able to slide this entire section side to side. I think it gives it a really cool modern feel and is kind of a little unexpected. So if you're ready to see how I built Lucy her new hangout, let's get building. This piece was made entirely of 2x2s and a half sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. I always make my own 2x2s from 2x4s because one, they're cheaper and two, I want nice straight boards with square edges. So the first thing that I did was cut down my 2x4s into several 2x2s. I've got detailed plans and a materials list in the blog post linked in the description if you're interested in building one of these for yourself. Once I have my 2x2s ripped down, I cut them to length on my miter saw. This build is really easy to modify if you need a larger or a smaller crate for your particular size dog. I built this one to fit Lou's existing bed and made it about the size of a typical metal dog crate for a large dog. I built two identical side panels first. I drilled pocket holes into one end of the vertical slats and then I used wood glue and pocket hole screws to assemble them to the horizontal brace like shown. I ended up spacing these about two and three quarter inches apart. So I attached the two outside pieces first, then measured in, marked, and attached the next two, then repeated until they were all attached. I attached the other end of the panel using two and a half inch wood screws like shown as well. I could have used pocket holes again here, but since this side of the panel will be the bottom, you won't see the screws and this method saved a little time. There's definitely more than one way to assemble this. Once my two side panels were together, I needed to attach the top slats between them. So I cut these to length and drilled a pocket hole into each end of all the slats. By the way, when working with 2x2s, two I found it's easier to use one screw and wood glue than to use two screws to help avoid splitting. I used wood glue and pocket hole screws to assemble the slats to the top of one of these side panels, like shown. When it was time to assemble these slats to the other side, I asked Danny for a little help holding the pieces straight up so that I wasn't screwing these in at a weird angle. Lucy decided to join in on the fun as well. She loves getting in the way when I'm working. I used some right angle clamps on the corners of the crate while the glue was drying to help ensure that everything dried up square on this portion of the build. Once the glue was dry on the main part of the crate, I added a small section of slats on the front left side so that when the door is shut, the crate is still enclosed. So I used a pocket hole and pocket hole screw to install a small bottom 2x2 and attach four slats between it and the top frame. I spaced these two and three quarter inches apart as well so that it would match the side panel spacing.
The crate is upside down here, but you can see that I use pocket holes on the top and two and a half inch wood screws on the bottom, just like I did with the side panels. Again, you could use pocket holes and screws for all of these, but the simple butt joint and wood screws save some time and it'll be hidden on the bottom side anyway. Now the crate is finished, but it's time to add the door. I recruited Danny again for this to help me get a sheet of plywood up on the workbench because my shop is so full of stuff right now, it was hard to move around. I used my Craig rip cut and circular saw to rip the sheet in half down the middle. If you're interested in how I cut down full sheets of plywood, I have a whole video for that and I'll link it at the top corner here. Then I used my AccuCut to trim down a front, top, and back panel. In hindsight, it would have been really cool to do a waterfall edge with this and miter the corners, but I didn't think about it until after the fact. So, whoops. I applied some glue on edge banding to the sides of all the pieces and along the top edges of the front and back, just to cover all the exposed plywood edges. To assemble, I drilled pocket holes into the ends of the top piece and used wood glue and pocket hole screws to assemble it to the front and the back like shown. Once this was together, I used some corner clamps to hold it square while the glue dried. Then I test fit this door onto the crate to make sure it was going to work. I needed to mount the drawer slides that will be used to slide the door back and forth to two of the top slats. So I crawled into the crate and drew a line along the side of two slats onto the bottom side of the top of the door. I brought the door back over to the workbench and installed the slides along these lines. Once the slides were mounted to the top of the door, I placed it onto the crate with the door extended all the way, kind of put it where I wanted it, and then screwed the slides into the slats. Then I brought it in the house and put Lou's bed inside. I opted not to finish this piece. I don't really have a good reason for that, except that I was just really lazy at the time and I didn't want to bother with it. But I may eventually go back and add a few coats of poly to seal it, but that's another task for another day. I'm so glad to have that metal crate out of the living room and I think Lucy's pretty fond of her new hideout. But don't worry, she still spends most of her time in the shop with me. So you'll still be seeing her sneak into many of my future videos. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you aren't already subscribed to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on what's coming next. Until next time, you guys, happy building.